and I'm looking forward to it. So Excellent. Heather Holloway, thank you. Thank you, Jim. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming out, and thank you to Jim and Koopmans for hosting this event. I think it's great to tie Koopmans Lumber together with the equine community, and the more chances we get to do that, the happier we are. So I work for Blue Seal Feeds, as you may know, and again, my name is Heather Holloway. And I'm a lifelong horse girl myself. Um, yeah, woohoo! <laughs> I've ridden every kind of hairy beast that came to the barn. Um, and I, I love to talk about this because until I worked for Blue Seal, I mean, I had horses for 30 years more, actually. And I didn't know a lot of things. And I didn't know what I didn't know. And I thought I knew enough, and I probably did. But there's always something else you can learn, right? Have you noticed this with horses? If we think we know it all, oh, yeah, just wait till the next time you go to the barn. <laughs> Your horse will teach you something. Someone in the stall next to you, you know, someone has a horse and say, did you know this? And you think, oh, I had no idea. So hopefully today, we're going to focus on just the equine digestive system, and that's enough to talk about, okay, today. And as we go along, I'm going to encourage you to be interactive. Please ask your questions. You know, I don't, I want to kind of keep stories to a limit, because it's really tempting to be like, I had this horse that had that problem, and, and we're off. So if we could kind of limit that to later, for networking later. But if you have questions as we go along about what I'm saying, or what an organ does, or, you know, you know, does this cause colic, et cetera, please ask your questions. I think that, that everybody in here has so much to share, not just me. I happen to be standing in the front of the room. This is a very cool tool, I have to say, which I will share with you. This is the gut bucket. <laughs> it's like Elvis. Inside here are many wonders. <laughs> So when we talk about digestion, what is the very first thing we have to talk about? <laughs> teeth! You knew that. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is teeth when we talk about the horse. And we've all seen, has everyone here had a horse? Has anyone here not had a horse? When I say had, you could lease, ride. Everyone's had horse involvement. Okay. So I'm going to use that baseline of assumption as I go along. Okay. So here we are inside the gut of the horse. Okay. <laughs> We're starting by talking about teeth. How many incisors does the horse have? How many what? Incisors. Actually, he sure. has an equine dentist here. Maybe he can answer the question. So six on top and then? Six on the bottom. Six on the bottom. So we have 12 incisors. How well, many molars do we get? Well, you got uh, three premolars and three molars on each side. That's right. Top and bottom. That's right. Terry, you are good. <laughs> Terry, on the same. He can so, tell you how to how to age the horse by their teeth. <laughs> that's, a, that's an art and a science, right? So everyone knows about aging horses with teeth. Everyone's heard of this, a long in the tooth. We've all heard that in the grooves. It's very interesting. That in itself is a talk. So yes, the answer is always six when there's a question about teeth. Six, 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 six. That's how many teeth, all right? So have we all seen molars? Have we all seen incisors? Okay, so what do incisors do? Yeah, they're like the scissors, yeah. right? Because they're a grazing animal. So that's the entry level moment of nutrition into the horse, right there. Boom, that's where it starts. You will not see that, that forage or feed for four to five days in the stall. So whatever is going in there, you want to think about it. Because they're spending some quality time, my friends, with their food. Mm -hmm. right? So they nip it off, and then what are they doing with their molars? Mm -hmm. Yes, masticate. They're, gr they're grinding. You've seen these things, right? Like prehistory back there. Don't ever put your hand back there. When you go, don't go back tomorrow and go, Heather said this is cool. You know, don't reach in there. Um, however, they grind and they need to grind. Why? What are they eating mostly? Cellulose. Forage. Cellulose. Yeah. Why, is it, why does it matter? Let's forget about temperament. <laughs> Let's forget about that for a minute. For the horse's teeth, why does it matter that they eat that much forage? Because they're continuously growing. They're continuously erupting. Correct. So when a horse is born, there's about five inches worth of teeth in that skull. You've seen this. You've seen skulls, perhaps, and they erupt. Now, you know, it's up for grabs how much they erupt. People say a sixteenth of an inch. People say a little less, a little more. I'm going with a sixteenth because it's easy. And they continue to erupt throughout life. And then what happens at some point? <laughs> they do. And then what happens? Your horse is out there. His incisors are still there, probably most of them, some of them anyway. And he, most of them, right? So he's, he's nipping away. Back here, well, we kind of ran out of teeth. So then what happens? They're chewing away, kind of, sort of. They die. They, they, yeah, if we don't intervene, they will die because they're a prey animal. They're meant to be part of you know, nature. They're meant to be somebody's lunch, not, a, not in our barn. Um, so what, what do we get? What do we see falling? Hay balls. Hay balls called quidding. Quids. Or quids. Yeah, quids. So the horse in his mind, though, thinks he's doing a good thing, right? He's chewing, he's chewing, he's chewing. Now, that's behavioral, and it's very important. The horse has to do it for him to feel okay about his life. 
because he's a grazing animal. And how often in the wild do horses graze? How many hours out of 24? Would you say? Take a guess. 16. You guys are good. You, this is a horse crowd. Most people are like, I don't know, two and a half? No, um, yeah, 17 is the thought. 17 to 20, depending on how bad the forage is, how poor quality it is, how much nutrition they eat, right? So that's in the wild. We all know that our horses are big, warm blood, or our, you know, our appendix cord horse is not a Mustang. However, they would like to eat like that because it's their nature. It's who they are. So mentally, even if you have this old horse and he's lost his teeth, right, and he's really making quid balls everywhere, in his mind he thinks he's doing something. As long as he's not having a choke issue, you know, it's up to you what you do with that. But behaviorally, they do need to do that. Okay? So, what do we that, call... That's why they spit the quids out, so they don't choke. They do, they just, yeah, because they can't get it, they can't get it done. Right. They're trying to create a bolus, right? They're trying to create a bolus. If you've seen a bolus, uh, probably if a horse eats something he doesn't like and he tries to spit it out, you've seen that weird thing they do and it falls out and it's all kind of wet. That's called a bolus. That they're trying to do is create something small enough in their mouth with their giant tongue to fit down their esophagus, right? Um, now, interestingly enough, you notice that when horses are grazing, they tend to graze this way, right? This is their, this is my version of the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and the Rolling Stones are here today. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, yeah, no. Okay, so now they're eating away like this. Why, why would we want to continue feeding them? Doesn't that seem counterproductive? I mean, their, their mouth is down there, and they're swallowing. Wouldn't we, like, we would want, we don't want to go like this, right? We want the gravity to work for us. And yet they do this. So when you feed your horse in your barn, now this is a topic, hot topic. People have different opinions, right? Who's <laughs> shaking her ass? <laughs> what, what would be, okay, let me ask you, what's the natural way to feed a horse? On the ground. On the ground. Out of a feeder, maybe, so we don't get sand collet, depending on where you are, okay? Because the, the esophageal rings in this animal's throat, you've seen this, right? You watch them eat and you see that, that bolus go down. You can watch it happen in some horses and you can see the esophageal rings work their way. They're incredibly powerful, much more than ours. So they're designed to work against gravity, okay? If they're eating like this, you get horses that suddenly stop eating and chewing the way that they should because they can get that food down in a hurry. And then what happens? choke and bolting, right? They start bolting their food to get this. Now, some horses are behaviorally this way, but often it, it has something to do, seems to be with feeding. You start feeding them like this and put a salt brick in there or something to slow them down, they're much better off. Thoughts? How much saliva do you think your horse makes in a day, my friends? Lots. Good answer. Lots. That is correct. Lots. Let's just use this as a unit of measure. This is a Koopman's bucket. Five gallon bucket. <laughs> this is a five gallon. How many of these do you think your horse makes a day? Saliva. Two. Yes. Terry is the man. <laughs> <laughs> Terry from Ridge Valley, you're the man. Thank you. Two. You're welcome. <laughs> that equates 85 pounds. We all know we carry two five gallon buckets through the ice yeah. and spin and slosh it. Yeah. So, okay. That's how much they make in a day. How much do you make, do you think? Saliva. Yes. It's about right, it's about three cups, roughly three cups, depends on the person, there's some variance there. So just to give you an idea. So in this, this is a bicarb-based substance, that's why I have my baking soda to remind me to talk about bicarb. It's a basic, uh, uh, it's got a basic pH. And the reason it has a basic pH is because we are headed to the uh, stomach. Correct, okay, so here's the stomach. Does anyone know how long does food stay in here, do you think? Not long, not long at all. Look it how big hold a lot either. it doesn't. Look at it. This is roughly to scale. I mean, kind of. This this whole thing is roughly to scale. Okay. Really? Yeah, roughly. So think about the size of your horse in your barn right now. Say he weighs eleven hundred pounds or a thousand pounds. All right. So picture him. Somewhere in that silhouette is is this at the front end, right? So how do you think? How much time do you think? If we were eating all the time, right? Constantly eating because we're a grazing animal. Food comes up mm, in here. We got some hydrochloric acid dumped on it. How much time? 15 minutes. Oh. Wow. I knew that one. We're in, we're out. Yeah, she knew. She I was like, I knew that one. Don't be shy. <laughs> don't be shy. Yell it out. Come on. 15 minutes is not very long. It is not very long. So so what do you think is happening in here, really, besides hydrochloric acid getting dumped on? I think just on? churning. I don't think much digestion happens. Not much. Time. You're right. A little enzyme action. That's it. Pretty much we're just passing it on. So it's all um, um, mechanical muscular movement. So of course, they're squeezing that brings the food up. 
it gets mixed up a little bit in here and then it gets squeezed out. And the way that it gets squeezed out is this has a, you could think of it as the equivalent of an overflow valve on your sink in the bathroom, you know, where it starts to flood and there's a hole in the back and it will just vent out the back. This gets to about three quarters full and it vents out the back. Yeah? So sometimes when I'm working with my horse, like in the barn, mm -hmm. grooming him, I can hear his stomach growling. Great. That's good. Great. Gut noises are, are a happy day. You want to hear that. Gut noises, if you, have a, if you suspect you have a colic, what's the first thing your vet tells you to do? Check for gut sounds. Listen for gut sounds. If you have good growling, rolling gut sounds like that, you're happy. But should you hear that like at a certain frequency or? Depends how close your ear is and it depends on how much he's digesting right now. Um, it shouldn't, it, it really, unless the horse is showing any signs of distress, then it's not a non-issue. That's why they have It's a gas. good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, if they have excessive gas or diarrhea or something like that, then you may have another issue. But the, the gut sounds themselves are a positive thing. Okay, so that's a good thing. So you have a good thing going there. All right, so I put a Band-Aid on here, because I like to do stuff like that. That's not really in your horse. Okay. <laughs> All right, why would I do that? What, what happens in here frequently? Horses off the track, we see this a lot. Ulcers. 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 And what's an ulcer, roughly? What, how would you describe it? Irritation of the mucosa of the lining. Yeah, irritation of the mucosa, yep, of the lining. So if you have a, a grazing animal designed to be eating 17 hours a day, let's just say theoretically, okay, and where he goes for six or eight hours with no food, and then we take him out of the stall and we go for a trot. <laughs> okay, trot. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like that. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so in here, is, this is just a vessel full of acid, right? The upper squamous layer, which is the, the soft mucosa lining, starts to get uh, unhappy. It starts to get ulcerated because there's no, uh, there's no bicarb to balance it, and there's no forage. Now, <clears throat> fast fact, oats will absorb their own weight in moisture. Hay will absorb four times its own weight in moisture. So what, that's why hay is great. It comes in here and it soaks up all of this before it passes on. So it's soaking up the acid all the time. So if you're riding now, people who do endurance riding, there's a real science to how you feed, but the average person who's feeding their horse and just going for a, an easy ride, um, you want to have a little bit of hay in here when you're riding because that's working for your horse. You're not doing this. Right? Yeah, so uh, you said the pH of the stomach varies depending on how much food is in it or if there's no food whatsoever? What I'm saying is that there that there's an acid environment in here. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that this is basic. Okay. So if we are sending boluses along here coming in, then that's going to neutralize the pH that's here. Okay? This is a naturally uh, acid environment right. and it should be. Yeah. It should be. However, if we leave this and it's designed to have 17 hours a day to have yeah. something coming through here which is not acid. Mm -hmm. Right? If that isn't happening, this becomes an acid environment which then starts to actually become self-destructive. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. That's why on long rides, you let your horse eat. Mm -hmm. Drink and eat, yeah. Drink and eat. That's true. And they start getting cranky, and you think, well, I don't know. He's having a bad day. He is. <laughs> Talk ours, ours trim trails on the way. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Trim trails, that's right, yeah. There's a lot of conversation about that. That's a whole other talk. All right, anyway. So here we come to the next organ. And what is this one, do you think? Intestine. Small intestine. Small intestine. All right. How much volume do you think this holds? How many gallons? Because it's long. It's long. Let's start with how long it is. How long do you think it is? I'll just keep doing this while you think. Well, keep going. More. 45 feet. More. 175. Le less. That's the whole interior. The whole interior is 100 feet, just to give you. Okay. So 70, 75. 70. 70. 80. 70. 70, 70 feet. Go once. Go so I'm not saying yet. 70 feet. 70 feet. Now, out of the 70 um, feet, how many gallons do you think it holds? Roughly. It varies from horse to horse, but roughly how much do you think is fitting? Now notice it's not too big, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this isn't exact, but it's kind yeah. of, it's close. 30 gallons? A half inch garden hose holds a lot. Yeah, 12, 12 gallons, roughly. 12 gallons, roughly. Again, if you have a mini, if you have a, you know, they're all different, but I'm just giving you some averages. Okay, so I'm not there. Okay, there we go. Now we're there. Huh. <laughs> well, all right then. So. You made that? I made this. <laughs> Of course I did. Creative. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, let me it's tell you. I am I'm one with the bubble wrap, my brother. <laughs> but can you see how colic happens? Yeah. Okay, so obviously inside your horse, you know, if you were to change, turn this on its side and you looked at your horse's barrel, rib cage area, and then back to his hindquarters, yeah, you could say this is a reasonable facsimile, but it's packed in, of course, much better. It's not just everywhere like this. However, 
when you're riding along, if you're, you have a performance horse or a horse that's genetically predisposed for some reason that we have no idea why, they're going along and all of a sudden one of these loops over another and displaces, right? We have, a, we have a displacement colic that happens and then usually we have some kind of necrosis happen and we need a surgery. So when people are talking about colic surgery, this is usually what they're talking about much of the time, some of the time, let me say. Other kinds like a, a um, impaction colic, if it's not severe, can be cleared. And so what do you see? Your vet comes out with what? Enema. Enema on one end and what's the other Mineral end? Oil. Mineral oil. right? And there's the tube and they're trying and they're hoping to oil up, lube up the interior and get things to move. Now, if that doesn't work and the horse is in extreme pain and this has happened inside, it doesn't make any difference and you're going to have to have a surgery. Okay. Um, so has anyone seen a horse who's in acute pain or had a colic event? Can you see a show of hands? How many people? What does that tell you about horses? Of all the people in this room who've all had horses, look how many, one more time, raise your hands, I'll raise my hand, who have seen a colic event. That's a lot of people. They this is bad, not uncommon. They had a bad designer. <laughs> They're designed to be lunch, <laughs> okay? In reality, out on the plains. Yeah. Okay, we've, we've made it very different for them now. Okay, so it, it's not uncommon. What do we see in a horse? I just wanna educate you about this a little bit. This is not digestion. I'm gonna take a slight diversion because I think it's very important. When a horse is having a pain response to a colic, what does it look like? Rolling a lip. Yep, rolling a lip and slamming. Rolling. Rolling. Getting, sitting, laying down, getting back up, laying down, getting back up. Agitated movement like that. Just yep. Biting at the belly. Biting at their sides. You'll go in and you'll see these patches that look like they've spit all over them and you think, what's happening there? Um, how about, have you seen a horse that just goes in the corner like this and just doesn't look at you? It's just, cannot be spoken to. Okay, so those are things to look for, and I just want to mention that in case anyone ever sees this in the barn, the very first phone call you make is to your vet. Don't call your neighbor or your friend who's also got horses. Call the vet first, and then move on from there. Okay, so back to the digestion. So what do you think these might represent? Worms. Yes. <laughs> they do. Good one. That's right, they do. <laughs> this is a tapeworm. He's gross. <laughs> All right. <laughs> These are worms. These are worms. Well, what do we do about what well, they do live in there? They are quite gross. And there's all different kinds. And they are basically, of course, living off of your horse in a parasitic in, you know, relationship. They do nothing for your horse at all. Okay? I would like to mention that worms are very ancient and they've grown up with your horse over about 11 million years on the plains. They grew up together. So horses can survive a worm burden, but they don't look great. What do they look like when they've got a worm burden, heavy worm burden? What do you see on the outside of the horse? Weird looking bloated stomach. Yeah, strangely bloated. Mm -hmm. What else? How about the coat? It's really right. super dull. dull. Dull, looks ashy almost, right? Like not like cottony or something. It doesn't look nice and sleek, especially in the summer. If you see a horse like that, you think this can't be right. They should be nice and sleek right now in July. They're not. Um, how about their hoofs? Sometimes not very good quality. Because basically what these guys are doing is globally taking away nutrition. So if there's a lot of them, they're going to take a lot of nutrition away from the horse and then whatever the horse was using that nutrition for in the first place isn't getting done. So his personal housekeeping isn't getting done. So the horse overall just doesn't look well. Sometimes lack, lack of energy. Now if you have a horse that has a huge worm burden, do you want to go in and be like, I'm going to buy three tubes of ivermectin and give it to him all at one time? No. Yeah, get rid of those worms. <laughs> no? Why? Because then they're all going to die at once and you're going to get a colic. They are, they are. They are all going to die at once and get a colic. And what else is dying in here? Normal flora. Tissue. All the, the beneficial bacteria that live in here. All the flora. Um, we hear a lot of talk about that now, right? People have, there are products out there, ProBios, there are a lot of different products that you can use to repopulate the gut. When you kill off worms, you also kill off the beneficial bacteria. Something to know about the horse, your horse digests nothing for himself, nothing. The beneficial bacteria digest everything for your horse in a symbiotic relationship, and your horse takes the building blocks of proteins and so forth that the beneficial bacteria have released from their digestive process, and that is what they use. They live off those byproducts. That's what they eat. They don't digest anything. When they are born from the mare, they get a dose of probiotic through the mare. Now, and it, it happens instantly, and then they, they're, they're loaded and ready to go. But if you, if you they get that from the first milk? Colostrum is an important milk, and, and yeah, lactation. I mean, you, you'll get, and you'll, you've seen this, you get babies and they don't have a mare, 
for whatever reason, so you bottle feed them, and then the products do have the probiotics in them, but it's never the same. Yeah. Those babies, my experience, okay, my personal experience, not as a blue seal rep, just as a horse girl, um, they, they, they don't thrive as much as you'd like to see, my, my experience. Our friend freezes colostrum. Yes, it's, oh, a, really? it's, a, it's yes. a commodity, it's a great thing, yep. Can I ask a question about warmers? Yes, we're going to talk more. Yep. Okay. Um, it seems to me that most of the products have the same ingredient. So why, if there's different types of worms, I would think that the ingredients would be different based on what the worm is. But all the products seem to have the same ingredient. Yes, that's a great point, an important point to make. I'm glad you brought that up. So you can see here, I've got purple and red. They don't really look like that. But this represents, I don't know if you see yarn. This represents different kinds of worms because there are several that can live within your horse. And you never really know. You can do a fecal test and find out what the worm burden is and if you really fancy what some of the worms are. But you never really fully know. So what you want to do is a full spectrum wormer. Well, if you do, say, ivermectin all the time and then semectin, and you just do that rotation, you'll get rid of these guys. These guys would be like, sweet. And they will just continue to live on and have an excellent time because you haven't used a drug. Either they've become immune to it because they keep seeing it over and over again. So you breed immune worms. I mean, um, remember, they're an ancient creature. They've survived like 11 million years, all right? They didn't get that way from, I mean, they're, they're hardy. So they will actually become immune. If you uh, use Praziquantel, which is in Equimax Gold, it's in Zemectrin Gold, that will get rid of our friend the tapeworm, who, will, who is a silent worm that kind of hangs around and will never be touched by ivermectin, as far as I know. Um, so yes, if you, in your warming program throughout the year, and you can consult with your vet on this because it depends on, you know, there's some factors and horses can have different things going on and, you know, I don't want to comment specifically on horses, but um, consult with your veterinarian about a program and they'll happily give it to you about a warming program and a rotation that's appropriate for your herd. And I would encourage everyone to do fecal samples. It costs a little bit of money, but you know what, if, you, if you've got a closed herd, say you've got six horses at your barn and they're not horses coming and going all the time, um, it's harder if you have a sale barn, harder to do. But if you have a closed herd, you can test the manure from different horses and see, okay, our herd has this worm burden, and, and I, you know, when I picked out of this stall, I got worms, this horse doesn't have very many, whatever. And you can just continue working on it until you get down to almost zero worm burden, which is great, and, and something we can actually do now with technology. So it doesn't cost all that much to do, and, and vets are you know, more than happy to test for you. Yeah. Does it save in feed? Um, like you could break even on it? You say it costs a little bit, but you make up for that, and more effective digestion or what? That's a great point. Yes. I don't know if you save and feed dollars, but certainly in terms of the value of what you're feeding, because if these guys are eating it, your mm -hmm. horse isn't getting it. So it's money to feed the worms, you know, and if they have a heavy worm burden. Now, one thing you could consider if you have a horse that you think has a super heavy worm burden, you could give smaller doses of wormer and wait a few days, maybe a quarter of the amount if the horse is in poor condition. You'll see in the bags I gave you, I gave you a body condition score chart. We don't have to look at it now, but you can, when you get a new horse or see a horse that you want to work with, you can judge from one to five what their body condition is. And oftentimes if they're below, like a three or below, this is part of your problem frequently. This is a common and it's an easy fix, really. So things to know about worms. Other questions about worms? No? Moving on. So that's the small intestine. And oh, by the way, how much time do you think food spends 70 feet? How much time? Two days, three days. 12 hours. You can't believe how fast this organ is. Less than two. Wow. This is this is like the fast lane. <laughs> this is the fast lane on the highway. This is the passing lane. Now, what do you think gets digested in here? Before I move on, actually, I didn't want to talk about that. There are five things. Five things that get digested here. All right. Carbohydrates, fats. What else? Protein. That's okay. No, it's coming. No, it's coming. Attraction. Minerals. Minerals and the B. Vitamins. Vitamins. We'll get to water too. Yeah, that's it. Those are the five things that are happening in here. So they don't have, there's not much time. So if we only have like less than two hours to get this job done, it's going to go 70 feet and we need to digest all that stuff. How much feed do you think we ought to put in here at a time? Concentrate. This is a concentrate, not a forage. Okay. So these bagged feeds are concentrates. <coughs> How much concentrate at a time do you think this thing can handle? 12 gallons it holds roughly. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, roughly, one-to-one. Well, that's not even fair to say because it's a mixture, so it's hard for me to answer that question. I would say oats absorb one-to-one. -one. These are a mixture of many ingredients, so I'd have to really look it up for you to tell you exactly. So in general, in general, it is thought that less than five pounds at a time is a really good idea. 
I would go so far as to say four pounds or less at a time is a really good idea. If you have that thoroughbred or that appendix that takes after the thoroughbred side <laughs> and has a pitched roof for a wither, um, and you need to feed that horse more concentrate to get it where it needs to be because we've genetically modified these horses so that they're not thrifty with their calories. They're meant to be very sleek, but we want them to be a little bulkier. You're going to need to do more meals more often. So you may need to feed a lunch meal. You may need to feed an evening meal besides dinner. So it can't just be the usual, you know, AM, PM, one scoop. Shiny gets one scoop. <laughs> Joey or whatever. So <coughs> keep that in mind and weigh your feed. So everyone, I go to the, this is like, welcome to my life. I go to Barnes and I say, how much do you feed? Oh, well, they get a scoop of what? Well, you know, like they get a scoop of, of, of Sentinel LS and hay stretcher, two scoops in when it's cold. I'm like, how big is your scoop? Well, you know, it's like a scoop. <laughs> and then, so you go in and it's two quarts. Okay, so I know how much you need to convert. Or a coffee can. Well, it's a pound, right? It's a pound coffee can. Pound of coffee. Right. <laughs> Not anymore. No. If I filled that with sand, it would weigh. If I filled it with feathers, it would weigh something else, right? It's a volume thing. So if you if you really want to know how to feed or what you're feeding, so that you know whether you're making any progress with your horse, if they're thin and you want to put weight on, or if they're heavy and you want to take weight off, you know you want to weight tape them every week. But you also want to say, okay, I weighed the feed because your vet's going to ask you. <laughs> I weighed the feed. I'm feeding. You know, three pounds of Sentinel L S and one pound of hay stretcher AM and PM, and then he has free choice hay and it's second cut. And if you're really fancy, you're going to get that tested and find out what's in it. And so, um, just some interesting points about how to feed and how much to feed. Because if you overload this thing and it can't get the job done, guess what? This isn't mechanical. It's squeezing the food along. It's going. Only got a couple hours. It's, it's out of here at the other end. So by the time we get to this end of it, if things had not happened that should have happened, we have a new set of problems that we could live without. All right, so this is a trash bag. It's <laughs> one of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a full disclosure. What do you think this represents? Cecum. The cecum. The cecum, uh, yes, the cecum. It doesn't really look like this in real life, but this is kind of, it holds about 8 to 10 gallons, and it is, it is the epicenter. It is a fiber party in here, my friends. Fiber party. There's a disco ball. No, that's not true. There's a, it's a fiber. The only thing happening in here, the primary thing happening in here, is fiber digestion. There are billions and billions of microorganisms that live in here. They are specifically designed to do a job, and that is to digest fiber. All that fiber that yours has been eating 17 hours a day, nothing happened with it in here. It's a pass-through. Bye, 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 moving it on. This is looking for certain things, what it can do. The microorganisms that live in here do five things, right? What are the five things that they do up here? Just as a review. Protein, <laughs> <laughs> you said all of them, yes. Carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals, fat. Yes, all, it, it all happens here. Okay, when we get in here, this is where fiber happens. And this is where you're, this is the furnace of your horse, which is nice to know this time of the year. What happens in here is that these microorganisms, again, are digesting for your horse, because we know the horse doesn't really digest anything. He provides an environment, right? That's what he does, or she. So when he digests, he releases VFAs, VFAs, volatile fatty acids, which convert into heat. And that's how we get heat. So when people say, I feed more hay stretcher in the winter, because I think it keeps, him, keeps the weight on. And the reason it keeps the weight on, there's not a lot of calorie in there. It's not about calorie. It's about fiber. Because if, he, if he's an animal, think of the square inches of your animal. What is he, 1,000 pounds, 15 to 16 hands, whatever he is, he's big. Okay. Now, if he's wearing a blanket, that's going to trap the heat. But anyways, he's going to make heat for that entire surface area. You know, so in here, uh, we really want to keep things status quo. We don't want anything coming through that the horse can't handle. Interestingly enough, the way this is designed is kind of how it is. In comes here, in coming here, out going there. And it's in this tiny little valve area. The fact that horses don't have more issues is shocking to me. When you look at this, you know, after this, you're going to go back online and start looking at the horse's digestive system. And in the um, sentinel pieces that I gave you, there's actually a kind of a, a more basic layout of how the organs lay out inside the horse, inside of the silhouettes. You can see roughly where they are, which is helpful. Um, but it's shocking to me that all of this food is going in and out of this little area, and there aren't more problems. It's really interesting how horses are designed. So any questions about the cecum? So that really is separate from... It, it is. Mean, it's a blind it's, sack. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's, you know, in real life, it's tucked up, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, tucked up it's, next it's, to it's, Yeah, it, it's weird, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it's it like is. a piece of prehistory. It's so weird. 
It looks like it's detached. It is in real life. Like if you were to see an autopsy, not that you want to look at, it, if you yeah. see an autopsy or, or a good drawing, you would see how it how it it's tucked in. Yeah. But in reality, I mean, it's attached with ligaments, but it's not. Um, it's not. It's its own. It's its own little system. It doesn't like flow. There's no flow. No, there's no flow. Only status quo. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the capacity of that? You said eight gallons, 30, 30 quarts. Wow. Yeah, roughly. Um, you know, and again, it varies from horse to horse. So, but and it, it'll be in here for a few hours. It'll be in here for a few hours, and it's going to. Um, it's going to. If you want to think about what a piece of grass would look like when it went in here, it would look roughly like grass that you pick. So just remember back in the days when we had grass, you remember. Last August, you remember grass, right? <laughs> you guys are all sound like, no, we don't remember grass. <laughs> no, I don't know. She's I, kidding, right? I, yeah. <laughs> what? What's this grass you speak of? She's so funny. Okay. So you, <laughs> yeah. 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 Only in the bales all dried up, right? So picture a piece of green grass that you would pick and you can't really look through it. Um, it's opaque, right? It's green. So if you imagine that we're going into the cecum, and then in here, mm, it's getting all chewed on, and it came out the other side. What would you would have is sort of, if you want to think of it this way, is like a cell cellulose window pane look. Mm -hmm. So it would just be the outline of the cells. All the juicy stuff is gone. Mm -hmm. So you're left with a cellulose material, more or less. Okay. So if it's done its job well, it will have taken a tremendous amount, and you can see how how thorough that is. So, but we're not done with it yet. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. But wait, there's more, friends. <laughs> here in the hind end. So from this point forward, we refer to as the foregut, from the small intestine all the way to the front, foregut. So then again, from the, from the uh, cecum to the back is called the hind. hindgut. So when you hear people like, like to throw that term around, oh, the hindgut, something happened in the hindgut, really? Because there's a lot of hindgut. <laughs> okay, let's get more specific. Well, before you go to yeah. the hindgut, so. <laughs> 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 the um, foregut here on the floor. <laughs> so commonly with horses that have like um, huge issues with worming. Say you get a horse, I don't know, the horse came out of somebody's backyard and they, you know, the horse is 10 years old, has never been wormed, and it's filled with worms. So if you go in and attack it with dewormer, so now you've killed off everything, including bad and good stuff, is that what's putting the horse at more risk for gas colic because everything is mm -hmm. jumping? Yeah, because it, this is a one-way digestion, right? Yeah. Everyone knows that horses <coughs> cannot throw up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you know that, right? One, this is a one-way street. Once it's once they swallow it, we're all set for a while. It's going to be going. We're going to spend some quality time with that, my friend. Quality time. So is that why they say like if you go and um, go and basically attack your horse with dewormer, like you said, give them three or four tubes at a time. That's why they're at higher risk. Cause they say that. So is that that why? Because you're killing everything off, and nothing gets digested, and ends up all in the cecum. Yes. There's oh, there's wow. a couple of things that are happening there. One is you're killing off the, the beneficial bacteria, and the other is you're killing the worms themselves, which can actually make a ball. Yeah. Oh, if there's exactly. enough of them, actually make their own blockage, and as they decompose, they're now releasing gases, mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. so the microorganisms are releasing gases. The the worms are releasing gases as it's going through, and, and nothing good comes of it. Um, and it can become a, an impaction colic. It can become a gas colic. It can become both. Um, one thing you can do for a horse like that, or any horse, if you want to give them a probiotic just before or just after you worm, you're kind of you're kind of saying sorry at the same time. <laughs> you know, you're repopulating the gut at the same time that you're taking away, you're giving back. You know, or you could do it a couple days before, um, or, or or before and after. As far as I know, please check with your veterinarian. As far as I know, as long as you follow label doses at, per day for a horse, I don't believe you can really damage a horse with probiotics. I've never heard of any issue with that. So if you wanted to do it a little before and then a little after, that would be okay. Um, you can get two, you know, there's all different forms now that you can use. You can just top dress with powder. Um, Probias is, is a common one that we see. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't necessarily, I work with Lucio, we don't have any other than in our product. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Sentinel um, actually has uh, probiotics in it. Sunshine Plus, which is a top dress, which is like a Centrum, has pre and probiotics. So prebiotic feeds them and a, a probiotic is them. <laughs> okay. A probiotic is the organism itself. A prebiotic feeds it. So if you send it in with both, you're all set. It's going with a picnic lunch. That <laughs> works out good. Okay, so you can think of it like that. I mean, I tend to speak in non-technical terms because this is how I think about it, but I think it's easier to just, okay, for, for quick reference. If you really wanted those super details, you can certainly look it up. Um, I want to talk a little bit about omega-10 before I move on. So when we digest fats, which we know we digest here, 
Um, it is emulsified quite easily by a horse and not so much by a human, not, not to mean to eat omega things. So when we eat a lot of fats as a human being, what organ in our body is involved? Organs, well, specifically one. Gallbladder. Anyone who's had a gallbladder attack or stones knows what that's about. Gallbladder is a tiny little sac, right? And it's responsible for putting bile onto the fat to emulsify it so we can use it. The trouble is that we overfeed it too much fat and it can't get the job done enough and then we have problems. Horse your has no. White. What's that? But then your poop's white. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone here. would like to know <laughs> the net effect of what happens, that is it. Okay. <laughs> No, <laughs> someone that we knew. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bile gives the Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. it's yeah. exactly right. The bile, that's exactly right. So with the horse, he's not limited by the size of that little gallbladder simply because he doesn't have one. Oh. Well, that's handy. So that's why now we have this craze for feeding high fat. Okay, so this is a Sentinel product. It's a 12-12-20. So when I, say, when I reel that off, what does that mean? What's a 12-12-20? What does that refer to? Carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Uh, the, tw the first 12 is protein. Protein. The next one is? Fat. Yep, next one is? Fiber. fiber. Yes, protein, fat, fiber. Okay. 12, 12, 20. So people, people say that and you know, you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so this is 12%, which is considered a high fat. You can't get too high. Omega things are 20. After that, it just starts falling apart. It's too soft. It can't hold the pellet form anymore. And then you have other products that you see out there that are kind of like um, just nuggets of fat that you can feed at the top dress or people just feed oil. Mm -hmm. um, so you can give amazing amounts of fat to a horse and they can utilize it because the liver just dumps bile onto it and emulsifies it and it goes right in and we're done. Easy. Not like us where we have to go through that extra step of the gallbladder and we're limited by the size of the gallbladder. Horses don't have that limitation. So as far as we know, for normal feeding practices, there's not a big, there's not a close ceiling let's just say on how much fat you can feed. There have been studies on lab horses that you can feed, you know, outrageous amounts, but I wouldn't recommend it. But for your average pleasure horse, you can use that as an energy source. Right? So omega can will put a bloom on a horse. What does bloom mean? It's Flowers coat, come out of his ears. Shiny. What? The coat, coat shiny. Coat shiny, that kind of, that really healthy glow yeah. look that they get. Good feet, good hooks, good uh, coat quality. And they put on some nice top line. They put on some bulk for you. And this is designed originally, uh, uh, my understanding is for uh, halter horses and quarter horse congress. And they would feed this like six weeks before show. They really get them like looking fantastic and then bring them to the ring. It's extremely uh, good at putting weight on. So if you come out of the winter and you have a horse that's showing some rib lines now, which after this winter, you know, is probably not going to be an uncommon occurrence. This is a great way. When you get to the other end of that bag, you'll probably see some pretty good results in terms of weight gain. Um, and in not weight gain, it's also fortified, so it's, it's useful to the animal besides just fat. It's not just fat, okay? Sentinel is a good maintenance diet. If you have a horse that's uh, in need, it's really good for almost any application at this point. It's a 12% protein. Let me ask you something before I talk more about that. Does protein make horses hot tempered? No. no. Thank you. Okay. People have a misconception about that. Yeah, no. Protein is the building block for pretty much everything that's going on in there with your horse. Pretty much everything. So it's important that they get enough of it. But they don't really need, if they have excess, what happens to the protein? Extra protein goes where? It goes out of your paddock. It's expensive. <laughs> you know, as, you're, as you're, you have the pleasure of mucking, you're also throwing some of your money away. It's great. <laughs> You're good about that. Yeah, it's good for your garden. Great for your garden. It's great for your garden. Exactly. It's fertilizer. So, and then, <clears throat> of course, 20% fiber is going to keep our friends in the seeping happy, right? Oh. Makes them very happy. So as a maintenance ration, a great ration, it's become one of our best sellers. Sunshine Plus is a top dress. So, again, think of it as like a Flintstone vitamin. It's like a Centrum. Um, and it has, as I said, yeast base, so it's prebiotic yeast, it feeds probiotics, and then probiotics are also in it. This has been around forever. It is a great product. It's very easy to use. You only feed about a cup a day. That's it. So it goes a long ways. That stretches your dollar. What about Minivite Light? Minivite Light is also a great product. It does not have the yeast base prebiotic. I'll get right with you. Um, it has a uh, slightly lower protein. This has a 30% protein, but you're only feeding it at this rate. Mm -hmm. Minivite Light, I believe, is 15. I have to look it up. But it, again, you're feeding it the same way. Also, right. about Dynasty XT Pro, which is over here. This is also a friend of the Seekum. This is a beet, pa beet bulb paste. I'm going to try that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> it is not paste at all. It is a beet pulp based feed. Beet pulp based feed. And there's nuggets in here and a little bit of beet pulp. And I actually have a sample over here that I'll show you what it looks like. You can pass that around. 
It is a low NSC. What's NSC? Thoughts? NSC? Something sparing. Something sparing. No, but I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that later. It's non-structural carbohydrates, so sugars. So when people have a horse that's it's insulin resistant, you had a question. Hold on. Hold on. I'm Take coming back to you. I'm good. Coming back to you. Um, if you have horses that are insulin resistant, if you have horses who um, you te who tend to get hot, you, that uh, off the track thoroughbred, you do not want to feed him maybe a molasses based sweet beet, huh? Not so much. Not today. If you want to ride, <laughs> um, not th not in this weather. It's not a good idea. So uh, these are low sugar feeds. They're under 20 NSC. Everything that I'm showing you here. Uh, some of them are lower than that. So if you had a horse that had a sugar problem, you can see me after class, and I can talk to you a little bit about what might be appropriate for you. And we're always happy, by the way, to take your special cases in your barn. We always have a special case. Come on, now, we all do. <laughs> the one you can't keep weight on, the one you can't get weight off, the one that picks around and won't eat anything, the one that won't stop eating everything. The one um, that has diarrhea. The one that has diarrhea chronically, and we can't yeah. get rid of it. Um, I we, have a that. Yeah, we can, uh, we can do some nutritional analysis for you. And we have a PhD on staff, and we work with her to make sure that what we're telling you is sound advice. We're not just saying, hey, buy this bag of feed and see how it goes. Right, so is that a supplement? So this is actually, this is what's inside this green bag. This is Sentinel LS. And one other thing I wanted to mention, you'll notice it's a nugget. It's an extruded nugget. Sorry. And you can pass that around. The extruded nugget is um, designed to fall apart very quickly in the foregut, so it's digested easily. and doesn't, Nothing gets here that's not supposed to be. When you have horses that maybe have dicey dentition issues, when you have horses that bolt their food, they just hurry up and eat it. They get it down the hatch. Well, if it's a tight pellet, those horses are going to take, it's going to take longer for it to fall apart. That's all. So now we've already made our way through here quite a ways before it's even really falling apart. With this, it falls apart very easily. If you have a horse with poor dentition, you want to put some water on it, it just turns into a mash. And it's, it's really easy for horses. That's about two years old, so, you know. <laughs> just, want to, just want to let you know, that is not to feed anyone. Um, but I wanted you to kind of see what it yeah, looks like. Not pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's that this feed right here. If you have a, a horse that sorts and is kind of a difficult feeder, Dynasty XT Pro. I so far have never had any horse turn their nose up at it. It, it is the official yummy feed of Blue Seal. <laughs> Does bee pulp go bad at all? Does bee pulp go bad? That's a good question. Everything will have a point where it isn't, isn't as effective. Yeah. You know, bee pulp is already a byproduct, so it's already dried, yeah. unless you've wet it. Yeah. If you've wet your bee pulp in the, in the summertime and you leave it overnight like people do and it's hot, it starts to ferment, right. it's not a great thing. If you go in and it's kind of like bubbly, yeah. throw it out. Yeah. But if you open the bag? If you open the bag, the only thing I would, would say is if it seems moldy, that's a problem. Yeah. Um, there is a shelf life, it's probably, it's probably, if it's kept cool and dry, like in this environment, no rodents and nothing else happening to it. It's probably a year. Okay. But you want to kind of look at, you know, you want to look at when it was created. Uh, personally, for me, if it's if it's beyond six months, I'm... Here we go. So we're in hind vet now. What is this? Oh, yeah. Large. Yes, the large, the, the large colon. This is a large colon. <coughs> How long is it? Roughly? Oops. 30. 30. <coughs> 10 to 12. Weirdly enough, it's not very long. It is a saculated construction, which is why I used pink, <laughs> so, you can really, so you can really see with more tape, just more tape. It's a saculated construction. So you remember my example of the window pane cellulose piece of grass, right? It's come out of the cecum. There's no green left. Now it goes in here, and it goes through all the saculation because a horse has to use every bit of nutrition it can out of everything it eats because it's a huge animal. I mean, honestly, that's a big body <clears throat> to support day after day. And then we ask them to do stuff, jump. Are you kidding me? You know, we ask him to go galloping and do all these things that we like to do and reining and slide stops and all that. It all takes a lot of energy. So this horse needs to get everything he can out of every blade of grass he eats and all of his concentrates. So it's making its way through here. How long do you think that takes? It's only 10 feet long, but it's got to go all through all the saculated construction. Three hours, hey. 36 to 48 hours. Yeah, roughly, roughly. And it makes its way through. I mean, that's a long time. So 48 hours is a couple days, right? Yeah. Okay. So it makes its way through, and it's sitting in here. And when we get in here, sometimes we get one of these. This is a ball of tape. But in real <laughs> Which is why I say don't feed duct tape to horses ever, really. Okay.
Okay, so what are these called? What do we find inside oh, a horse's um, gut? Sometimes he's when he's older. Rocks. Rocks. What is it? Rocks. Yeah, enterolis, the stones. Right? Have you heard of this? A calcification. So this is like a pearl, but not a good pearl. So if something gets in here, the horse is eating along. He's eating off the ground all the time. Right? He's eating and he eats a piece of a rock. Or he eats a piece of wire. Or he eats uh, a piece of baling twine, my personal uh, pet peeve. When you go into an area and there's baling twine everywhere, I can't believe it. Because, you know, these little pieces that get cut off, like when you open the bale, you see little pieces. Well, the horse will just eat that with the hay. Right? So it's got to go. It may make it out. It may not. If it doesn't, the animal, see, the animal system sees that as a problem, which it is, and covers it up with calcium now, and uh, continues. Is that the twine or the plastic? Plastic will also cause this problem. Yeah, I know, but won't, won't the, the other stuff just go out with the, with the rest of the manure? Can because do. Because it's more of a natural product than plastic. It might. It might. It might. This is a saculated construction. Yeah, because our hay has plastic twine. Yeah, yeah. And any, any, anything that is not a food stuff, <coughs> anything is not feed. Yeah, but the, the other, the other is a natural fiber. Might. Yeah. Might not. You know, something to think about. And there's no promises. It doesn't mean that you, you know. We, I've had horses that live to be 32, and they, you know, have been in environments that, at farms. You go to them, and you're like, I can't believe he's alive. You know. Like there's barbed wire fences and there's cows and oh really and but you know the horse does fine so but then there's that one ho hot horse flower hot house flower horse who just can't handle that at all so these are called enterolists they can get quite large and you can go online and look them up if you really want to sometimes they cut them in half and you can see what was in the middle Sometimes. all right so say what if starch made it all the way back here starches and sugars get all the way back here this is only digesting fiber still because we should have digested everything else already really right yeah gas and bloating, and then, so say the sugar gets out into the bloodstream, what happens to the horse? He's beat. Founder. Founder, laminitis, yeah, navicular yeah. changes, nothing good. Mm -hmm. So in lamina, uh, laminitis, who can describe it to me? What is it? Separation of the lamini and the feet. It is. The lamini look like, if you want to think of the bottom of a mushroom cap, they kind of, they connect the hoof wall to the coffin bone, right? So it, right. Con it connects the horse's foot together. What happens is they start to swell. Now that's a fixed capsule, right? The hoof is hard, it's not expanding. So therefore the pain is pretty painful because it's, it's a lot of pressure in there and the horses go lame, right? You see them and they'll stand, if they're starting to get any kind of rotation, they'll stand on their heels, they'll camp out. See them standing camped out on their heels. You've seen this before maybe, mm -hmm. hopefully not at your farm. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen it before and you think, oh, that doesn't look good. So something's going on there where the horse doesn't want to put weight on the front of his hoof. So he's trying to get off of it. Because horses weigh is mostly when they're standing on the front end. And it can happen in any feet, but front feet seems to be the most, seems to be pervasive in the front feet. So, of course, and then what happens is that weakens the lamini, and then the coffin bone, which is like a little triangle from the side, points down and will come out the bottom of the foot. That is terminal founder. That's when you're, you're done. And people will keep horses alive for many reasons through founder event. Horses can come back from founder where they just have a ro what's called a rotation. So the bone rotates, but then the, there's a recovery of the hoof. And so the horse can get along in his life okay. Often you'll see a stovepipe shaped hoof, a long narrow hoof. Sometimes you'll see fever rings or, you know, if it's really bad, you'll see like the ski shaped foot. <laughs> um, in any case, if you ever suspect that you have an issue with laminitis, you always call your, you know, any, any of these medical things always call your vet. That's not a nutritional fix. But I want to tell you about it because it does relate to nutrition. So some horses, if they have an issue with laminitis, you want to be very careful about your sugar contents and you want to test your hay. But talk to your vet about it, okay? So I just want to give you a little information on that. So here we come. So what is the only nutrient that we haven't talked about digesting? And sir, you said it earlier. Water. Water, yes, water. So here we are in the small colon, okay? Now, weirdly enough, look at how much smaller this is than the large colon in size. Isn't that crazy? And inside the horse, there's a pelvic curve. So this is going along, and then the fingers goes Roar, and tucks back underneath. It's a remarkable design, and I'm amazed that it works. If you look at it on paper, you think, oh, that'll never work. <laughs> Big stuff, <laughs> small hole. Yeah, yeah, this can't be a good idea. Whose idea was this? All right, so anything that comes out of here is now indigestible material. There's nothing else in here that's going to, there's nothing else except for water that can be had. That we've taken that piece of grass, and we've done everything that we can possibly do to get nutrition out of it. So by the time we get to here, we're just talking about absorbing water. And how much water per day should a horse drink? 12 to 15 gallons. Yes, 
world was defeated, but here's a prize, so it's like three of these. I know, summer day. Some horses will drink poop. Depends on the horse. Some They'll horses are big drinkers. They drink quite a bit in the winter, too, because they dehydrate faster. Yeah. They should. Yes, they should. That's they why our water is warm. They should. Horses will not drink in the wintertime if it is super cold. And you'll have the one horse who will stick his head in. There's a little skim of ice, and he shoves his head in there anyway. He doesn't care. He's like, ah. He thinks it's funny. He makes a game out of it. But then you get the thermo that goes, oh, yeah, no. So you know that needs to be 40 degrees, right? I'm not, I'm not all about it. And so they won't drink. But then we have big problems, right? When we don't drink, they need to have that water every day, whether it's you know cold, hot, it doesn't matter. They can live without food way longer than they can live without water. Have to have it. So water heaters, bucket heaters we have here at Koopmans. We have livestock. I'm sure we have floating heaters for livestock tubs mm -hmm. um, and probably heated buckets, I would assume. So check with Koopmans if you do not have a heated bucket. I see, I see Matt shaking his head, yes, we do. <laughs> It's a, it's a must have for winter around here, especially this winter. Oh man, spring coming soon. We Anyone use know? Heated muck buckets. Heated muck buckets. Because they don't burn as much juice as a hundred gallon tub. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so water. So we go along, we go along, and things start looking. And there's about ten to twelve feet of this. Okay. When we get to the end, things start looking familiar. <laughs> I feel like I've seen this before, somewhere in my life. I, maybe just this <laughs> He's pointing to his boot. Yes, I brought some with me. Thank you, sir, for bringing it. Great. I mean, I love interactive. Yes. So, okay, what, what is, some, no one's going to want to say it, but what is, what is actually this part of the... Road event? apples. The road, <laughs> yeah. They are called road apples, but what is this actually called? It starts with an R. Rectum. The rectum. It is about a foot long. I'm having a moment. I'll be right back. Okay. Rectum, they're about a foot long. It's about a foot long. And of course, in here, we have just everything that's coming out here. We've taken all the water out. We've taken every, all the nutrient out. So by the time it gets here, it looks like, you know what it looks like, right? You see it. <laughs> There's a little balls. They are very dry, reasonably dry. And um, we've taken everything we can out of them, and they just push along, and you clean it. <laughs> and that is the end of the gut bucket. <laughs> and it's not fly season. <laughs> All right, so questions, thank you very much.